Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I'm excited today. I got two cool trucks to talk to you about. I have a Toyota Tundra, I have a Ford F-150. Now, you may recall a couple weeks ago, I did a video, because I've owned both of these trucks, and I actually own that one currently, and I talked about whether I missed my truck and differences. The cool part is today I can actually show you those differences. Put it on camera, you know, like, you guys wanna see it. Like, hello, it's visual. So, in this video, I'm gonna try to break these trucks down to just the basics truck stuff, so you wanna know differences. So this 2022 Tundra is limited. It's the one I bought, TRD off-road package. This 20, I'm gonna call it 2022 because it's got new features on it, F-150, there's a little discrepancy with the uh, sales sticker, is an F-150, it's a King Ranch, it's got tons of options. It's actually a unicorn. I took it at a Ford dealership. This is one of one in the country. Now, that's a press loan vehicle, Ford PR, orders it, specs it out, builds it, ships around journalists like me to review. So I can't control that. But I'm gonna to try to ignore the King Ranch features and talk to you just straight up truck stuff. If you're looking for more King Ranch, I'm gonna do another video where I'm gonna take it to, I'm gonna drive Blue Cruise and talk about features and that. So yeah, that's coming. But let's start with this. So we both have blues. <laughs> blue's my favorite color. So uh, it's nice, we have both blue trucks. You can see the new design of the Tundra, and you see the new, that front end of the Ford. This is a little bit change, but it's basically the same. Now it's a little windy out here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get around a little fast outside and we'll hop in, put a lot of video on the screen. The biggest keys on the front, which I think are really interesting, is the placement of the fog lamps. You can see those differences. We also have tow hooks we have tow hooks in off-road truck right here do not have any tow hooks on the Toyota Tundra but what's also interesting about this though is that we have this air dam so and it's a double-sided air dam okay so we have tow hooks but we have an air dam we're going to scratch up going off-road because we're we lose ground clearance look how much ground clearance we don't have now the Tundra the Tundra has an air dam it only deploys at like speeds above 15 miles an hour. So that one's tucked up in a way. So it's, I don't know, it's interesting. If you're off-roading, you know how important it is to have ground clearance. So I have ground clearance in the Tundra, just don't want to get stuck because I don't need tow hooks. And I'm going to rip apart these air dam, the plastic air dam, off-roading if I off-road a lot, on the Ford. Mm, kind of interesting. On the sides, we can see a nice two-tone finish. And this is the power boost. We have the Tundra single-tone finish, just no two-tone at all. And we can see the tire differences. Now, this is the King Ranch, so we have different Prellies, we have off-road tires. I have the black dot rims here because of the TRD package. Now, what's interesting is on two-tone, you can't get the Tundra in a two-tone from Toyota themselves. They don't do it. You will find them. Some distributors do them, paint them up, send them out. But Toyota, uh, Ford offers it. I think it's a really nice look. Interesting enough, this has got powered running boards, which you can get on the Tundra as well. What's interesting is this King Ranch, coming in at $79,400, doesn't have powered mirrors. The Tundra at... $60,000 has power fold mirrors. Interesting. Come around this back, we both have five and a half foot beds. Okay, same bed. There's that. And over here, five and a half foot bed and spelled out. So one of the interesting things is when you drop the bed here, we have a composite bed. This is a new plastic bed. It's nice, it won't rust, it won't, let me get out of this a little bit. It won't rust, it doesn't damage, it doesn't dent. It's a nice, sturdy bed. Slicker than snot when it's icy and wet. So spray and bed liner, something to work on, maybe something you want to think about. Um, I do have some tie down spots. I have a 400 watt plug in here, which is uh, 100, was it? Yeah, 400 watt, 120 volt plug in. Uh, I have, what's interesting in this bed though, is it slopes a little bit, as you can tell. It slopes down a little bit, which is interesting. I do have some tie downs and a tie down rack there. One of my beefs about the new Tundra is right here. When the tailgate's down, you have to have the deployable step, which you can buy extra for $400. So $60,000 plus $400 get in your bed when the tailgate's down. Not a big fan of that. On the Ford. Okay, so 
the, this is higher trim stuff, all right? I have the dampened tailgate. I do have the measurement. Now, this is a bed utility group package you can get with this because it also has the power fold up. So that's not standard trim. My XLT didn't have that. It's something you can get with a higher trim. That's the biggest difference is you can get more packages with Ford and more stuff with Ford than you can with Toyota. Man, it's getting windy out here. I have tie downs here, here. I don't have the rail system like Toyota has. I do have the power on board. So I have, I have a 220 hookup here, four 110s, 7.2 kilowatt hookup. So you can power your house. You can power things on a trail. You can go uh, long distance camping or uh, uh, off the grid camping and have that. Another thing that comes, you, this is not standard. This is something you can get in higher trim levels. I do have the step that comes up. It goes like this and up. Now, I did keep this though. So even if I don't have this step, I can grab here and get up there. Well, you can if you're more flexible than I am. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So one of the things that's interesting, let me put this down. All right, <laughs> get rid of that. Uh, one of the things I thought was interesting, and I did a towing video coming out later on. I towed with both of these, actually I'm gonna tow with all four trucks, all diesel, hybrid, V8, and the twin turbo V6, is the hooks for the rescue chains. This configuration here, that's terrible. <laughs> I fought with that this morning, trying to get it off. That was just absolutely terrible. Toyota did the right thing. Boom. That is perfect. That's great engineering right there. Big thumbs up there. Yeah, huge fan of that. Plugs up top. So I would say the Tundra wins all day long hooking up a trailer because that was super simple. Now, one thing I want to talk about on this truck before I hop inside, before I freeze my gonads off, is that last year when I had my XLT, I made a video about rust on the truck. And it really kind of pissed me off because it's a brand new $60,000 truck. I didn't expect any rust on it. Well, guess what? People in the comments tore me apart. All have tons of rust, Tim. That's just a random Ford you got, Tim. My Ford doesn't have rust. Well, let's check this out. You can kind of see it right there on the rear axle housing is rust. So, $79,000 truck that has rust in axle housing. Now, is that gonna rust through and become a problem? No. Is it gonna, that cast iron's not gonna be a problem. Is it gonna be a liability? No. It, what it is, is it creates questions in my head as far as if they didn't coat the rear axle on purpose, which is what they're doing, what other quality issues am I gonna find in the truck? That's what it does. It creates that sense of doubt in new truck owners. So that's something to keep in mind. Toyota, you can pretty much eat a sandwich off their rear diff. That's how clean it is and how polished it is when you get it from the factory. So they have coated theirs like crazy. That's my point on that, is that it just creates a question in your head. Yeah, one of those things. All right, so one of the biggest things, let me, let me turn this other side so I can show them off together because this rear seat has caused an interesting question. And I have it folded up, which is good. Let's get my winter coat out of the way. There we go. But I want to show this because I'm going to show that there. I'm going to show this here. Okay, so we have two different ways to do the rear seats. Two different ways, two different configurations, for example. So my friend is six seven. He's sitting here. You can see the leg room. It's not as big as the prior generation. So they have shrunk the leg room in the 2022 model. But what you have is you have the hump here. You don't have a flat, flat loading floor. Now you can, in this case, you can raise the seat up and you do have some storage in there, right? But this is fixed storage. And so it's interesting. Um, we have been hauling groceries home and it's one of those weird things where I have to put the groceries in here because I don't want them sliding around the back. Now you can, Bring this down over here. Let me get to it. Actually, it's right there. Let me go. Let me go the other side. Yeah. And there is a spot on that side. I just can't get to it. You can hang groceries here, right? And this folds down. What What I don't like about it is it doesn't fold down flat. So, in no case, whether this is up or that folding flat, folding down, do you get a flat floor? You do in the Ford. 
okay? So you have a flat floor, which is nice for storing stuff, nice for dogs. Dogs will like flat laying floors. This pops up, you can have lockable storage in here. It builds up, you can, you can actually pull that up, and then when you close the seats, you have the storage there. So you can have more of a flat floor back here for more storage stuff. So if you're carrying, I don't know, luggage, TVs, uh, guns and things, and you don't want to put them underneath the seat or whatever, I mean, you can do that. Now, the Toyota allows you to put guns underneath the seat, um, good storage in there, and you have some slots for your rifles and things. So just a difference. I've had people talk about they love the flat floor. Other people are like, eh, it's not a big deal. I've owned both, and I'm kind of... I'm split. I don't know, it could be. It could be either way. So, let's move along to the rest of the interior. In the Tundra, we have that powered mirror button I talked about, sitting for seats, and then I have uh, turn the wheel. But I have an analog dash here, and the screen is bigger stands up here. So, in this case. Um, it's new infotainment system. We're working through some bugs still on it, but I have big toggle switches. So it's just a different layout in here. And I do have the shifter uh, drive modes. And then I have these seats. That are, these are soft tech seats. It's like a plastic leather combo. Um, it really nice, really comfortable seats. One of the cool things that Toyota has done is right here. So you can open this up as you would normal as far as storage for the center bin. But you also have a little tray here you could open and actually access there. And then you have a his and her basically armrest. This is really handy. And I'll show you why in the Ford. The other thing that's really handy is right here. This is a great armrest for long distance driving. You don't put your arm down here. You can put it up top, which most guys do. Big fan of that. And I'm a big fan of these mirrors. And so one of the things in these mirrors, as you can see the size of it, plus it has this little trim right here. It looks like little lines at night and when you're driving that turns down the glare from lights so really nice feature there and up here i'll show you in a little bit i have a digital mirror here so it's a, a camera off the rear chisel and it's nice and at night again it cuts down on glare from headlights pinner moon roof both cases okay so over on the forward i have the the entry which you get in all trucks right you have the keyless entry thing which is nice um, I do have same thing, seat buttons, things like that. I don't have the armrest thing. So your arm goes here, which is not ideal. I like my arm up higher. What's interesting is when they drop this down, like Ford's been doing the mirror though, is not much bigger. So one of the things I noticed towing was I want a taller mirror. You know, if they're going to make this drop down, that's fine. Go look, just a little bit taller would be really nice. Be able to see without having to go towing mirrors. If I were to tow with this truck very often, I would go towing mirrors with this because I need it. So in here, we have a different setup here. So we have the screen that's more embedded in the center console. The controls are here. They're smaller. They're push buttons, not the big handle, the big uh, uh, buttons. I do have four wheel drive auto. That one does not have four wheel drive auto. And I do have the same charger. What's interesting here is this charging space isn't very easy to access. You can hide stuff, right? Which is fine. But I can tell you after using it, I don't like that. In the XLT I had, I had a little groove here where my phone sat up. That was much better to me than laying down. This is just, I'm not a fan of that setup. Shifter, that kind of stuff there. Um, I do have a double glove box, which you find in all XLT and all trim levels of port. I do have the, the plugins up front. This is really handy for long road trips and things, um, keeping laptops charged, things like that. So I have more power in the this truck as far as those 120 plugins. In the center console here, I don't have that his and her. So when I want to get in there, I have to open the whole thing, right? I don't have that little tray. And then I don't really have much storage organization. I just have a big empty hole there. And so I do like the Tundra's center console and more storage options I like this Ford. And so I have the same kind of idea with cup holders, the same idea cup holders there. This is this is the fancier trim. The, this, this does go down, make a flat floor. You can open this up and have the laptop holder, but that's only in higher trims. So just a different setup here, right? Difference there. Now, one thing I want to point out is, well, I should say two things. Number one, this Ford has 
adjustable pedals. Those are a big deal for a lot of consumers. Adjustable pedals, you can move those back and forth. It seems like there's a lot of trucks, new trucks coming out without adjustable pedals. The second thing I wanna talk about is when I bought the Tundra, a lot of people were commenting on the payload number on that truck. They felt like it should be higher. So the, the max payload on the Tundra is like 1,800 pounds, and the max payload on the Ford is 2,100 pounds. And they were like, well, that Tundra can't haul as much as the Ford can because the payload numbers are different. Well, as I said in the comments, it's not so fast, right? So what you're seeing though with those 1,800 pounds, 2,100 pounds is what's called a unicorn truck to me. It, they just don't make that truck very often. It's got very low limit uh, options, very specific cabs. So look at this payload number, for example. So in this truck, I have 1,321 pounds of payload, which is not very much. So if you're towing, you typically take 10% of the tongue weight against your payload and that's your max payload. So payload also is everybody in the truck, everything you haul, every person, your phone, your wallet, everything. That's every pound matters. In this case, I have 1,400 pounds of payload. So I actually have more payload in the Tundra than I do the Ford and that causes people a little concerns because they want that all that max payload. But here's the deal. Once you start adding options to a truck, and once you get crew cabs and all that kind of stuff, you lose payload. And like I said, if, if I were towing, max towing with both these trucks. So this is 1,200 pounds of max towing. That's 1,200 or 12,000 pounds of max towing, right? So this is 12,400, I think that's 12,000 total, an even number. If I take 10% off for the payload number, well, so I'm gonna leave myself with 120 pounds left. Now, I don't weigh 120 pounds. <laughs> so I would overload this truck every time if I was trying to max tow. So you'll see that, that I said that towing video I'm gonna put out, I towed 6,000 pounds, so that cut that number in half. So inside the cabin, I'd only have 600 pounds, which means basically four people is probably my max towing, and that's with my kids being lower weight. All right. Before we get to the driving, I want to talk about the engines. This is a 3.5 liter V6. It's a power boost. You can see the orange cabling goes down to a battery to the hybrid system. So you can drive this in EV power only. It's great for idling. Um, it has no noise. You will hear the engine kick on. You'll feel a little, a little shift in the truck. That's when the engine turns over. Um, you can drive at highway speeds. It actually will do EV power as well. And that's when you come down the hill 70 miles an hour or so, you can actually get EV mode. It's really crazy. When the engine turns off, Cause you some pause, I'm telling you, but you can get it. And if you do baby this, like I babied it one time and drove really slow, I got close to 29 miles per gallon. That's pretty impressive. Over here, we have the same displacement idea, 3.5 liter V6, although technically it's 3.4 or whatever. 3.5 liter V6, twin turbos. You do get about, I've gotten about 22 and a half mile per gallon, 24 when I hand calculated, it was kind of a weird thing, but say 22 highway, they are building a hybrid version of this as well. It's going to be called the iForce Max. And so you have very similar ideas as far as engines. I do have an oil dipstick right there, which is easy to access on the side and get to the fuse box. Over here are the battery, the engine combo. And then what I've always disliked is, yeah, there's no getting the dipstick or adding, adding fuel down there from the side from mine. You have to be taller than me and I'm 5'7", and I'm on my tippy toes, and I can't reach it. So one of the things I do like about the Tundra is I can reach the dipstick, and I can get the stuff versus the Ford. I really can't do that. But like I said, let's get on the road. All right, off-road up with the Ford, and again, this is just country off-road. It's like what most people typically do. There's a couple things I really like about this driving this truck. Is first, it's got auto four-wheel drive. If you don't know what that is, in any sort of conditions that are a little bit questionable, you can turn it an auto four-wheel drive, and it works a little bit like all-wheel drive in that it'll, if it senses slippage, it'll turn the torque to those wheels, and so it allows you to have a more controlled driving experience in terrain or driving conditions that you may be questionable. 
what I really like about it is I think a lot of people don't use four-wheel drive enough. They rely on, they don't think about it, they get in a situation, they don't even, it doesn't come across in their mind, and they get in trouble. So if you have auto four-wheel drive, you leave it on. Uh, some manufacturers rec uh, recommend leaving it off for the owner's manual. Others just tell you leave it on all the time because it's just it's got a clutch system that activates the torque different tires. And so I like that quite a bit. Uh, both trucks do have rear lockers. And that's really good for when you're really in trouble. <laughs> um, you can actually lock both back wheels. And so one's not spinning more than the other. Torque is delivered with the same view on both wheels. Um, or the same energy of torque both wheels. So I really like that feature too. And I just think with the Ford and the Tundra, they both ride really well off-road. And so I don't have like one's better than the other. Both body on frame. Uh, this has got leaf springs, so it won't sag as much as other trucks do when you put a bunch of weight on it. That's got a five link coil suspension. And the Tundra, it may be sag a little bit more. Sag's not that big of a deal. And the ride comfort's about the same, I think overall, both off-road. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this comparison between the F-150 and the 2022 Toyota Tundra. Now, I'm not in the F-50, I'm in the Toyota Tundra. I actually was so enamored with the idea of using the Blue Cruise system on the Ford, I forgot to film driving it around. So check the video out though, I freaked out a few times. Is there a semi-autonomous driving uh, feature and uh, it's something, <laughs> it's unique. But I can still talk about these because I used to own a Power Boost and now I own the Tundra. And I would tell you on the road, they really do about the same job. The suspension though is a dramatically different. So in the Ford, it feels a lot softer. It reminds me of like an old school Cadillac. Very soft uh, suspension, feels like it floats a little bit. This is much more rigid. This is much more predictable. I think the Ford sometimes was just kind of smoothing around and it was just a different, just a different driving experience. That to me is more predictable. It holds the line a little bit better as far as when the suspension feels like I'm, I'm just tighter, if that makes any sense. Maybe I watch too many NASCAR movies, I don't know. But the uh, Ford is just a different driving experience. Uh, these both have a good amount of horsepower and torque. Uh, off the line, you will find that the Ford Power Boost is gonna be faster than Tundra. I said in a different video, and what I meant to say in that video was, I feel like this Tundra's faster because it is more of a rigid kind of drive, more dialed in, tighter, and I have a fake exhaust note. I know, I know, people hate the fake exhaust note, but if I can't have a V8, at least I wanna hear something. In the Ford, it's a very, what I consider more of a numb driving experience. It is fast, it's, it's, I'm not gonna say it's not fast, but you don't have that visceral feeling of hearing any exhaust at all. So just a different uh, animal there as far as what you're feeling. Uh, they both you know, turn decent. There's a lot of conversation right now on turning radius of the Tundra being the worst in class. And I guess if you look at the specs, it probably is. I've never had a problem. It's a big truck. You just learn to go a little wide when you pull in and you just anticipate the size, right? It's not a Miata, you're not gonna dart in. Um, I don't know that the Ford was, Ford was probably better. Um, I think it probably drove a little bit smaller. And that was years ago, Ford put a motor inside of the steering wheel. It's an additional motor on top of the power steering and it takes the wheel to wheel turns and cuts it down even more so it, so that it corners better. So it's not just about turning radius, it's about a little bit of that additional piece of steering wheel. And I think that's basically my summary between these two trucks is that I feel like the Ford has more features. It's got the little steering wheel thing, it's got the power on board, you can get that. It's got the more features for zone lighting. I just think that overall it's just got more features and you can build and price it to your exact specs. With the Tundra that I'm in right now, I feel like Tundra's pretty comfortable and I enjoy this truck. I feel like this has less features, but it's got more of the features that you really would want, right? So it's got the locking rear differential, I have the camera views, I have the trailer towing, I have those things that you know you need from a truck standpoint. So I think Toyota's got the, the a good amount of features. I wish it had zone lighting, I wish it had power on board, I get all that stuff. I understand we got talking about, I wish it did, it doesn't. But I think overall, it's got a good amount of features for what you need. Um, I always feel like with the Ford and Tundra that if you're shopping for a truck and you need lots of features and you like the features and things, they go with the Ford. If you're shopping for a truck and you really want something that has just the features you need, 
but also provides you with, I'm gonna say, more long-term reliability, which has been statistically the case with Toyota products, and I would buy this. So this to me is more solid as far as a truck truck, and it's got more of a solid reputation for quality and reliability long-term. Ford doesn't have the same kind of quality reputation, but I think there's a, you can play the game on statistics. There's a lot more volume in Ford sold versus Toyota sold. And so statistically, they should have more problems because they sell more trucks. But I also think that Ford offers more features, which are just one more thing to break, right? So yeah, there's a lot of argument about the onboard generator, whether that's a gimmick or not. Well, it, it I don't think it is. I think it's a great feature, but it is one more thing that could break on that truck. There is more copper wiring in that truck. And my concern with these trucks these days is not about the engines. It's about everything to add to the engines, the turbos, they add the hybrid powertrain, and they add a lot more copper wiring in these trucks to run all these features and things. And there's a lot of money spent in repairs if something were to go wrong with either one of these trucks. So that's what it comes down to me. Now people are always like, well, which one would you buy? Well, I bought them both. <laughs> yeah, I did, I literally bought them both. So I really can't answer that because I bought them because I want the newest truck. I didn't buy them because one feature was better for me, one feature is better than whatever, and I wanted the reliability of Tundra versus the Ford onboard and zone lighting. I didn't I didn't take any of that into account. I took into account that the Tundra was the newest truck last year, and so I wanted to buy that one. So I, I can't really say what I'm gonna buy because I bought, them, bought both of them, and they both were good trucks. So I just, I don't think you're gonna be wrong with whatever choice you make. I just think you'll find people are gonna either err on I want a ton of features, so I want the Ford. And people are gonna say, I want a truck that's gonna last 10 years with little problems, and maybe once they fix through the few bucks early on in this truck, uh, they're gonna buy the Tundra, right? So I mean, that's that, I think that's what it comes down to. Will the Ford last 20 years? Yeah, it should. Properly maintained, I think it should. Will the Ford last, or will the Toyota last 20 years? Sure, properly maintained, but it just statistically people have less problems with the Toyota versus the Ford. So that's what it comes down to me. I hope you found this video uh, interesting. I have a lot more comparisons to this Tundra versus other trucks. Make sure you check the links in the up top and in the end screen at the end. I'll put them on different playlists. Lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, lots of stuff these trucks. Also, a big towing thing I've been alluding to is going to be an awesome video. So, hey, thanks for watching. Check the video out over here, website down below. And again, thanks for watching. I said twice. As always, I'll see you down the road.